When I read that stained glass has recently been added to the list of endangered crafts, I was reminded of Danny DeVito's speech in that film, Other People's Money, when he talked about the last remaining company making buggy whips. Let me put this in context for you. In a move that's been met with dismay by many, the Heritage Craft Association in the UK has added traditional stained glass window making to its red list of endangered crafts for 2023. The Heritage Craft Association is a registered UK charity set up to support and promote traditional crafts. The red list of endangered crafts published by the Heritage Craft Association is a list of crafts that are at risk of disappearing altogether. The association's decision to add stained glass to the list is a significant warning that the craft is in serious trouble. The decision was made after a lengthy review of the state of the craft, which found that it was facing a number of serious challenges. Founded in 1921, the British Society of Master Glass Painters is the preeminent organisation advocating for stained glass here in Britain, and its members include historians, researchers, conservators, students, and importantly, leading glass artists in contemporary stained glass. The BSMGP has provided Heritage Crafts with a range of data from various sources for the expert panel to consider, including surveys of the Society's membership and lists the challenges currently faced by stained glass practitioners as follows. A decline in demand for large-scale traditional stained glass. Aging skilled practitioners. Lack of opportunities to pass on skills to the next generation a decline in educational opportunities and courses, and ever-increasing material costs. So now you're up to speed with the current problems facing this craft. To be honest, many of us working in this field have known about these problems for some time. Having run my own studio for the best part of 40 years, I can attest to a decline in demand for new stained glass. The traditional home of this most colourful and expressive of mediums has always been the church, and today we see a greatly depleted church infrastructure, which must prioritise maintenance of its ageing buildings above the introduction of new stained glass. As a result, the conservation arm of stained glass is still a relatively buoyant market, with a number of established larger studios in the UK competing for prestigious conservation projects for the likes of the Houses of Parliament and our great cathedrals. I recently visited Holywell Glass in Somerset, a very prestigious uh, and successful stained glass studio, to speak about the future of stained glass with Sarah Knighton, studio manager. It's really nice to just spend some time with you here at the studio and just look at the work that you're doing. Um, it, it concerns me somewhat the sort of looking to the future as to how stained glass conservation and the whole craft of stained glass is taught to the next generation. Do you have those concerns as well, sort of yeah. looking forward? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, because I don't feel anything replaces um, hands-on Per one person to another tuition. I don't think there is another way to do it. I mean, people do model through quite well with YouTube videos and things, but you need someone there to show you where you're going wrong quite often. Like, it's not just how to do it, it's also how not to do it. All that stuff is quite important. I remember um, when I started, um, uh, someone that I worked with, he had the same concerns even then, which was, you know, 15 years ago. He said he was worried. He wanted to pass his craft on. And I, I think we, get, we all get to a point where we want to start showing other people how we do things and, and getting them to, you know, um, have good practice. I think most of us in stained glass are practical people. That's why we're drawn to the craft and we learn a certain way and I think most of us learn in that practical watch someone else give it a go. I find it increasingly challenging to find good suppliers of materials whether it's paints, stains, glass types. It, it seems yeah. to be a, a shrinking market. It, it's definitely a shrinking market and um, especially now um, EAG's gone down apparently we heard recently which 
a really big blow to the craft. Um, so now we don't have anywhere in England that makes glass anymore. Uh, so we're relying on the, the French and the German, but you've definitely lost an aspect, a type of glass. And then um, the only place to find it is in uh, someone's shed somewhere. <laughs> And I think also working in a craft and working in, in the sort of creative world that we all work in, we kind of learn by, by doing and we learn by looking rather than just the theor theoretically absorbing information. You, yeah. you, there's, not, there's no substitute, is there, for actually watching someone else working and looking over the shoulder. That's where you learn the most, isn't it? You need somebody, you need at least one person. Better, better, you need a whole village of people, you know, because everyone does some, something slightly differently. In stark contrast to this, there are precious few new commissions around for the dwindling stock of contemporary artists who specialise in making new stained glass art. Traditional stained glass doesn't really fit well with our modern building vernacular of double glazed units and plastic windows. As a result, traditional stained glass made with handmade coloured glass, meticulously painted and stained by hand, it's been pushed aside in favour of more cost-effective building-friendly techniques such as screen printing and airbrushing colour directly onto glass. These newer decorative glass techniques make double glazing an easy option and as a result find favour with building developers and architects. Another factor contributing to the decline of stained glass window making is the shortage of skilled practitioners. The craft of stained glass window making is a complex and demanding one. And it takes many years to learn the skills required to produce high quality work. Historically, there have been a couple of ways to learn how to make stained glass, either through an apprenticeship with an existing glass studio or through attending an art college as a student. The art schools now offering stained glass as a degree subject have all but vanished, which stands in sharp contrast to the many courses available when I was in my early 20s learning stained glass at Edinburgh College of Art, I had the privilege of completing a four-year undergraduate course specialising in stained glass designing and making. And this course was comparable to other degree courses at the time offered by the Glasgow School of Art, Central St Martins in London, Swansea College of Art and others. These art colleges were instrumental and kick-starting the creative careers of many glass artists over decades. That's now ended. Stained glass is not the only applied art form to have been removed from college curriculums. Many material-based art course subjects have been surpassed by the need to offer innovative digital subjects which reflect current employment trends. The high cost of materials and equipment is another factor that is contributing to the decline of stained glass window making. The materials used in stained glass, such as coloured glass, lead and solder, they're all relatively expensive. In addition, the specialised tools and equipment, such as kilns, that are often required can be very costly to purchase. As a result, the cost of producing stained glass windows is often prohibitive for many people. The decision of the Heritage Crafts Association to add stained glass to its red list of endangered crafts is a wake-up call for all who care about the future of this traditional craft. If we are to prevent stained glass window making from disappearing altogether, we need to take action now. The single best thing would be to reinstate these degree courses in art colleges, but I don't think that's going to happen any time soon. However, there are several things that can be done to help reverse this decline. One important step is to raise the awareness of the craft. We need to let people know that stained glass is not just a decorative art form, but also a valuable part of our ongoing cultural heritage. To be honest, encouraging people to value our great stained glass heritage has never been a hard ask. Most people respond very favourably to seeing stained glass in our churches and cathedrals. The popularity of UK TV programmes such as The Repair Shop and The Princess Mastercrafters attest to the fact that heritage crafts occupy a warm and fuzzy place in our hearts. That's not the problem. The problem is, if we just love and concentrate on glass made in the past, we run the very real risk of starving it of any future. 
giving all our attention and resources to conserving of old stained glass without investing in the next generation of creatives who can continue the artistic journey will ultimately do more harm than good. I believe stained glass needs to shake off the perception of being associated with church art. It needs to reinvent itself as a contemporary art form with something to say to today's generation about today's world. Large scale architectural glass installations are few and far between for most practicing glass artists. So new avenues have to be explored. Collaborations can be very fruitful, bringing the skills of a number of different disciplines to the party, and it can offer the possibility of emerging new design styles. Painters, photographers, graffiti artists, illustrators, interior designers, and many others could all find inspiration and new visual languages if they were offered the opportunity to explore glass creatively. Now that art colleges have abandoned the subject, we need to find novel ways to reach out to these fellow creatives. Social media is the most powerful way to reach people and stained glass is sorely underrepresented in any meaningful artistic sense on platforms such as Instagram and YouTube. There are many hobbyists offering ways to make glass, but very few serious artists are willing to talk about their processes and their methods, preferring to remain aloof and distant from anything to do with social media. I think this has to change. And for the past two and a half years, I've been interviewing a number of contemporary glass artists on my YouTube channel as a way of elevating the profile of great glass art to a new generation who only think stained glass belongs in churches. This form of social media outreach is essential if modern stained glass is to continue to have a seat at the table. Another avenue worth exploring is art galleries. In the past, art galleries have been reluctant or unable to show stained glass because it's hard to display. These issues have been resolved to some extent by LED light pad technology, which allows glass to be displayed on gallery walls easily and conveniently. Framing stained glass as an accessible, desirable contemporary art form is well overdue. Raising the cultural value of stained glass outside the context of church art is essential to its survival. Otherwise, it will forever be thought of as a marginal art form of the past. Thankfully, there is still financial help available to contemporary glass artists. The Worshipful Company of Glaziers is one of the distinguished livery companies of London and offers a number of travelling scholarships and grants for younger glass artists to study at some of the best studios in this country and abroad. The work of the Glaziers Livery Company is to be commended and it's a lifeline for many young glass artists who struggle to find mentors to help them develop their skills. The British Society of Master Glass Painters offers the Benyon Study Award and the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Trust offers scholarships and apprenticeship funding. Finally, we need to support the work of those who are already working in the craft. We need to buy their work, commission new pieces and support their businesses. By taking these steps, we can help to ensure that stained glass not only survives, but thrives in the 21st century. Thank you.